It is an honor to be here this morning, and uh, I will tell you right off, I've, I've had to make some changes to my, the way I do my sermon, so I just write the, the scriptures down with them, so if you can't follow me, you just write down the scriptures you want, but you probably won't be able to find them fast enough to, to do that. It's, it's a, an honor to be in the home, my brother and sister Garmin. And uh, I was thinking as I was preparing last night and going over some notes, I thought, you know, we, we talk a lot about the resurrection, we talk about Jesus coming forth out of the tomb. But if you had not gone to the cross first, there you go. Uh, something would be very wrong with that picture. Amen. So uh, I want to I use a thought this morning. If, if we're going to be anything in this world, we need to be Christians. And we need to claim the blood. Yeah. When we claim the blood and we let it be applied to our life, then our life changes and things begin to take place we never would dream of. Sometimes, you know, when, uh, uh, when we were kids, we'd ask, well, the parents were, what do you want for Easter? Some, sometimes uh, we would say all we wanted, then they got what they felt like we needed. So that's kind of how I feel like sometimes when, when the Lord asks me something, I just say, don't even worry about what I think. Just give me what I need. Yeah. And this morning, that's what I want. And, and I do want to I want to ask you something. That may be something I ask you to do today that may be a little challenging. And don't let this bother you. But when I ask you to do it, I, I really believe if we all do it together, I believe God will bless us and help us. Our families will be stronger today. It's always uh, best to give uh, someone what they really want. It makes uh, what I call shopping quicker and easier. So Easter is, is all about Jesus. Yes, now, throughout the commercial thing, they're going to sell, I will, I'll probably say, a billion dollars worth of everything. Yes. But you know what? How, how blessed I am to be in the house of God today. Yes. Yes. And because you can say, we are redeemed because yes. this man, yes. Yes. we have hope, we, we have a heaven to go to because this man came out of the grave. Yes. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Right. I love the story of when Jesus was on the cross and he gave his life and just blessed his little heart and just kind of put his head down and through all the suffering. I don't know how he made it through as much as he did. Yeah. And when he shed that blood that day, brother, he touched the, the face of God. That's right. And Jesus said, from this day forth, this blood that I shed here, any man or woman, boy or girl that will accept me as their personal Savior, I have a resurrection for you. Amen. If you die before I come to this year, you will be resurrected on that morning. There's no, there's no Democrat or Republican that can hold you to the ground. We're going up. Well, I tell you 
you what, when you get Jesus and you get full of him, you will be. Amen. I want you to understand this morning. When when God made that little statement of turning his head and Jesus gave up and he just surrendered. Listen, he didn't he didn't have to die, but he surrendered so that we could live. We have an opportunity. It only comes once in a lifetime. He's not going to beg us for all of our life. He's going to ask you if you want Him as your personal Savior. And your resurrection will be when we get up from, this, from the pews that we sit on and we come down to an altar and we say, Lord Jesus, because of your death and your resurrection, I today can tell you that I want you to be in my life. Take my mind, my soul, my spirit, everything I have. Give me the peace that I need. Give me the joy that I need. Luke 12, 51 says, Do not think I have come to bring peace on earth, though I tell you, but division. From now on there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. I'm going to tell you, our, our world, our nation is in turmoil. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead and preach it, Mr. And our blessed little hearts, God help us, our little Christian people here, all of us, that we start letting our light shine, not in church, for God help us, Man, we shine a light in church, it ain't hard because everybody's got one. Yeah, amen. But it's got to be out there in the world where people don't know really what a Christian is. And probably some they met, they thought, man, I just don't think I want to be like that. Sometimes we get a little zealous and we want to tell everybody that, you know, they've got to stop doing this and don't go there. The first thing we need to introduce them is that there's a God and He loves you. Yeah. And He sent His Son Jesus to die for us. And He did raise up on that third day. Hallelujah. And there was there was no uh, deterrent to Him. Even though when, when Satan made all these accusations, yes, that's right. He was still defeated. Yeah. I had someone ask me in a church one time when I preached uh, a scripture about Him exalting Himself. You know, Sister Spicer, why in the world? How did he have that much power? Why didn't God do something? Because God doesn't want us to be forced to serve him. Amen. 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 If we're going to serve God, we do it because we want to. That's right. Amen. 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 Sometimes, I, you know, when I preach at camp or I do children's crusades or youth, I, sometimes I preach to them a little harder. You say, says, first they need it. No, I remember what I had to go through, and I sure don't want them to go through the same thing. There's a lot of people tell you that this is okay. Drinking, smoking, dipping the whole nine yards. You say, Sister Spicer, you're offending me. Just wait, I haven't finished. I want us to understand this morning that when we become a child of God, we are not like the world. We're not of the world. We come out from the world and we have to be different. What does different mean? It means showing people love. You can't be saved and beat your wife over the head with a board. You can't be saved and go out here and tell all these people that they need Jesus, but then they see actions and attitudes in us that they're saying, if you're a Christian, I really don't want to buy that stuff. So I'm going to claim that blood that Jesus gave to me. I'm going to claim it simply because I know what it's done for my father and my mother and the ancestors that you know that helped raise me. I want to tell you this morning, we have hope. No matter what this world may come to, when it gets any worse, Jesus is going to make it the best. Because when He looks down and said, my kids have had enough, He's not going to send out of my He'll be in mid air before we know it. All of a sudden, their bodies will be going up to meet Him just like on that resurrection day. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. When I read that, I think about sometimes old Satan when he gets in our business. He's never got in your business? Well, you're blessed. Amen. <laughs> and the Lord, I read this and I'm thinking, here God sits down at that table and He says, I'm going to tell you, the old devil may be close by, but I'm going to, I want Him to see how that I anoint your head. You know what that, when that, 
oil runs over your head. You know what that symbolizes? That symbolizes the blessings of God. That symbolizes Satan. You cannot, no matter what you do to this person, they're going to love me. They're going to serve me. They're going to go to church. They're going to be what they need to be. Now, and let me throw something out here at you. There may be a bunch of saved people here this morning. But are you sanctified? You say, well, I'm not sure. Well, what's your attitude? There you go. What's your attitude toward God? Lord, salvation's all I need to go to heaven. I get sick of hearing that. You say, well, sister, your salvation's good. Sure, it's good. But next time you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, just take the bread. That's all you need. It holds it together. <laughs> it's not going to give you the benefit and the joy if you don't have the peanut butter and jelly. Amen. 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 I'm going to tell you, back when Pastor was talking about, you know, we, we've, we've kind of been in ministry together for a long time. When I was a child, I can remember my mother sending me to camp and she said, Rebecca, for heaven's sake, please get sanctified. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't come home without sanctification. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that took him a couple of years. <laughs> then she would say, you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes, and I was Lord. fearful. Mm -hmm. See, back in the day when I grew up, people shouted all over the church, bumped into the wall, they had their eyes closed, they yeah. flaking their hands, and I thought, oh dear God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they never failed. I watched them dance on altar rails we used to have. I watched them, so I watched them dance, and I sit in my pew and I think, oh dear Lord, I don't ever want to do that. <laughs> she was that. that Thing was about that wide, and sometimes those men would get up, and I honestly, the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit, however you want to address Him, I want to tell you, it was it was in them and on them, and God blessed and great, and I call it mysterious things. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, at 12 years old, I remember they were, there was an old couple singing a song. I wouldn't take nothing from the journey now, and I couldn't stand it. Something got a hold of my heart, and I went down that altar before they finished. And I don't guess I was down there 10 minutes. So I had, all I can remember, my Sunday school teacher had told me, he said, the highest praise you can give God is hallelujah. And I thought, well, if it's the highest praise, I want to give you the best. So I began to praise Him. And in between those praises, I began to say, Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. I don't know how to receive Him, but you gave it to the people on the day of Pentecost. Now you need to give it to me. Yes, yes, yes. And there were sometimes I would say, I need Him. I received that blessing, and from that day to this, he has been a teacher and a guide. There's been times that he has been also my GPS. Yeah. 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 You have a lot of people, when they, they look at young people, they say, well, bless God, y'all not do that. And the kids don't understand why did it. And you're trying to figure stuff out, and you've got parents that are so sweet, and they just tell you, no, you're not going to do it. You may want to, but you're not going to do it. And I say, well, thank you, but I really want to agree. I'm a child. Let me be a child. I'm going to say, yeah, but I'm responsible. That's it, yeah. You know what Jesus said? When you come into the fold, when you come into to my circle, when you come in and be a part of my family, if I see the enemy, just like he did others, if I see him beginning to talk to you or put things in your mind or try to get you to stay away or do things you shouldn't do, I'm going to come down where you are and you're going to know that I'm with you. And you're going to hear my voice because I'm going to speak to you directly. You say, well, he ne he's never done that. He's doing it this morning through this, this old lady right here. You see, I truly believe that there's a God that, that loves us all. I believe that the Father loves His Son. The Son came. He didn't have to. He laid the royal robe down, the crown, everything that went with Him. And He came as a baby in a manger. Why? Because He wanted to grow up just like we did. And know all the, all the opposition you would have and all the blessings that you could have. But it was a choice. We choose today whether we go to heaven or hell. Like it says, Jesus stands as a shepherd, or to shepherd. He stands to shepherd, <coughs> excuse me, in the strength of the Lord. He stands to, to shepherd in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Jesus tells us, I will tell you, I'm here on my Father's business. And I, I'm, I'm not going to just let anybody be lost. God doesn't just walk away from people. Pastor, you and I know from experience, He will go to the... Death rattles. Yes, he will. 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 Yes, he will.
You see that sometimes we get kind of, we look at our parents or the adults in our life and we say, well, you're just too hard. Everybody else is doing it, but you want me. You see, here's the thing that we don't understand sometimes. The people that are telling you how to help you live your life now are one time where you are. And we know what we did wrong, and we realize we don't want someone else to do that or go through that. So on this Easter Sunday, what would God and I like for you to do? I'd like for you to be mightily blessed today. I'd like if you're not saved to be saved. I'd like if you're not sanctified to be sanctified. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'd really like for you to have that blessing. And, and let me tell you, you'll never be the same when you get all of it. That's right. Amen. Come on now. You'll never be the same. You, you will be saying, Brother Carmen, tell me what I do for the church. You want me to scrub before? I'll scrub before. You say, well, I don't think I'll go that far. Listen, when you get God, you say crazy things. I remember when he said, oh, Rebecca, I want you to preach my word. I thought, okay. I couldn't even give a book report. I remember some of my teachers here recently, after many, many years of not seeing them, I went to a place and several of them, a one or two of them showed up. And when I preached and got finished, when I said, I just can't believe that's you. You wouldn't even hardly speak. I said, it's kind of like God. Because I really don't, I really don't have broke down what I'm saying. You see, sometimes even the best of us need a blessing from God to pull us closer to Him. Yes. As a child, do you understand that in hard times, you remember your children and grandchildren when, when it storms or when it begins to get a little crazy in the home. They'll get as close to you as they can get because they feel, they feel secure. They feel that you're going to take care of them. That's what we need to do when hard times come in our life. We need to be on a katana behind. We need to come under the umbrella of the Lord and just stay right where He is. You love us sometimes behind. We need to have, I love church families and, and I believe you're a good one. But I think, you know, we have to help each other. If one falls, you go run and get them. You might say, hey, let me dust you off. They may say, well, I fell down. You just say, okay, God, save them again. Yes. Amen. It's not about perfection. That's right. No one's going to be perfect. I, I hear a lot of people tell me so much, I'm perfect. I say, I'm happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be perfect. It's so boring. <laughs> Jesus gave them spiritual security, emotional confidence, and eternal life. His gift. Could it be the source of defeat and discouragement and despair in our lives of some of us today is the fact that we are attempting to live a Christian life in our own strength and power. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Amen. I was camp director for several years in Virginia. And uh, oh, I use the term we're on a tight ship. I remember one day getting up one morning to go get me a cup of tea and I come out of the cafeteria and I saw these three young ladies walking down the sidewalk towards the place where you come in to register and they had on my clothes. And I got Sister Veronica Venable, a friend of mine. I said, Mama, well, what are they? That, that's, that's my preaching suit. What are they doing? She said, you want me? I said, go check it out. That's, that's not for me to go down there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shoes and everything. These kids were, they were like juniors. So everything was hanging off. Yeah. <laughs> Veronica goes down. She's a sweet-spoken little lady. And she said, ladies, why are you doing this? And I said, we just want to feel what it's like to be like Sister Spice. Uh, uh, and we thought if we wore her clothes, she said, I suggest you will know what you feel if you don't get this clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I can see the little feet going down. Amen. But I thought, Lord, I want to thank you because somebody sees Christ. Yes. I'm not talking about patting me on the back. It's a, it's a matter of loving the Lord to where that you get people so excited that Jesus is... Now, I'm going to tell you, I enjoy being a Christian. Yes. I'm not up on the clouds all the time, but I'm going to tell you, I stay up there as much as I can. Amen. This world has done seen enough harm. They've heard enough profanity. They've, they've seen enough division. Amen. 
Jesus said, I've come to bring you peace. I want, it. I want to do it today. We're living in the end time. Pastor and I were talking, and I said, well, I truly believe, and he did too, we're going to see Jesus. Yes. 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 So there's a lot of people that start out. We're going to experience the greatness of Jesus. We have to receive him as our shepherd. But there's something else he wants to be. He wants to be our king. Our king rules. Let me go back to something here now. How close are you to God? How much do you want? Do you want to sit with Him? Do you want to talk with Him? Sometimes when I'm trying to get a sermon, I find myself talking to Him more and finding also when I'm trying to talk and write, I just have to put the pencil down and just listen. That's right. Amen. He doesn't speak to me audibly, but He speaks to me in that still small voice. And kind of, it just comes to my heart and it just calms me and helps me. If you're here today and it's been a rough week, or if you're here and you're facing, you know, all kind of stuff, I don't know what the need might be, but this I do know. If we clean the blood, if we just clean the blood and allow it to do what it's supposed to do, then there's nothing that we face ever that will defeat us. There are choices that people make. Sometimes those choices are very, very unwise. And at one time in the history of the world, it says thousands of miles, people came thousands of miles looking for the one king. They wanted a true king. Someone they wanted to worship him. They did not wait for Jesus really to grow up and, and go searching for them. He showed them the way. I love you, Ken. Right now I'm not a director, thank God. I'm one of those people that I used to wonder why does Brother Hill sit out on the front porch and Brother and Sister Fritz and they all sat out there every time the service was over and I'd see kids gather together. Now that I've got my senior highlights, I've got me a chair. I love it. It ain't always wonderful. Yes, it is. I don't have to make excuse for things anymore. <laughs> now, so you said your place here, and it, it's just so sweet to hear that they'll sit down Indian style, and then they'll just start asking, how did, how did Jesus do that tonight for John? How did Mary, why did she start speaking in a language that we didn't know? And we sit right there and with our popsicles and and all the better for neighbor and for an actor of staff. And we just talk to each other. And try to put it on their level. Yes. That's how our relationship with Jesus should be. That's, right. Amen. That's how it ought to be. Amen. Never be afraid to go to him and admit anything you've done in your life. Never. Amen. Never. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing you can do to never make him mad at you. That's right. And if you really want to hurt him, turn away from him. The Bible teaches us the closer we are to God, the closer He gets to us. Amen. We're to help in time of trouble. All of our good efforts cannot restore us to peace with God because peace with God demands perfection from us. Now, I'm not talking about being perfect in the sense like God. But He said, if you're going to take my name, then you live right. There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. And all have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one that does good, not even one. And the way of peace they do not know. Because our sin has separated us from peace with God. And only an act of God Himself can restore that peace. Jesus is our gift. And you shall name his, Him Jesus, for He shall save the people from their sins. And we look to the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When I read these, I'm thinking, man, he, he just keeps talking about how He takes away the sin. He removes the roadblocks. He, he tears down the walls. And He said, all you got to do is follow me. Where we have the difficulty is where we get to looking at Him and then a friend starts saying, hey, you don't have to do that with really. Just go to Sunday. You know, there's a lot of people, and if you're one of them, please, this is not a a slur to you. There's some people that never go to church except Easter. Oh, yeah. 
or a Christmas thing like that. What are you going to do on the resurrection morning? You can't look at him and say, oh, Jesus, now I'm ready. Because the Bible says when he comes back, he's coming back after those who have made themselves ready. Son of a They've already been faithful. They've, they've stood through the storm. They've weathered everything that can be weathered. And here they are standing, and Jesus comes, and he calls to us. And we go up to me, and listen, this is what I. My vision's not that good. It's going to be better after they get through repairing it all. But I can tell you this. On that day, on that day, as far as the eye can see, every nation, every creed, every tongue, oh, praise the Lord, they're going to be standing there and they're not going to be standing there looking at Him. They're going to be praising Him. They're going to be going up on the top right corner.
Give Jesus your best. Amen. Amen. Can't tell you kids straighten up. Live right if you make it. The old, old time. I, see, I don't know. That's why I can preach from living here. There are times I go and, and, and I, I say this. I'm going to say this morning. You can't expect a child if you're going to tell them you can't do this and you can't do that. They go to the refrigerator and they see a fifth of liquor. Right. Yeah. That's not the right thing. No. Or you're looking at them and saying you're not supposed to do that. You're a kid. You're not old enough yet. But then you turn around and they look at you and they tap your pocket. You got six pounds you know, of cigarettes in. When the Bible said, come out from amongst the world and be separate, that's exactly what it meant. Don't do what the world does. Do what Jesus does. Amen. Encourage. Amen. Help people. And be now an example of the believers. Amen. If you go to claim the blood and it's running in your veins, don't tame it. And don't try to start the, your own religion by saying, I can do this. Jesus understands I have a problem. No, Jesus understands that sanctification will take care of that. And the Holy Ghost will set you free completely. Keep preaching, says Spicer, you're doing good. Hey, man, cool. <laughs> Micah 5 and 3 describes our life as one that feels abandoned. We feel abandoned. We have no Savior. We have no Shepherd. We have no Sovereign King. When I was working in Cleveland with uh, Pastor Cannon and did street ministry completely. There were times I would meet people, young people with gangs, they call them gangs. I looked at them as just die-hard kids that don't didn't have parents and they were trying to survive. Yeah. Yeah. And all I could do, I would fix a bookmarker and I would give a scripture every week. And I remember one of them coming out of that little crowd and challenging me and he said, look lady, Why do you think we need a bookmarker? I said, well, because I don't want to offend you. And I said, I'm trying to come to you with something simple. I said, if you read it and think about it, it'll make you feel good. And I had this young man who Sister Cannon had placed with me as bodyguards, what she told me. And I could hear him behind me saying, Sister Parsi, you ought not say that to him. I said, Andrew, I'm going to tell him. You see, a lot of these people sometimes, and, and I know there's some that's hardcore. I'm not taking away from that. But a lot of these kids on the streets, and when I was in Alaska and we were doing teamwork there, I remember what I saw was girls that were 13 and 14 years old, prostitutes. They came up to some of the guys I had on my team and asked them, Take us somewhere. And the kids came to me and said, Sister Spicer, what do you, what do we do? I said, you tell them about Jesus. Now I'm not trying to be funny, but the guys were on the run. They never, never experienced anything like that. But I told them, I said, this is the thing you need to understand. These are the children of the world. They have not had any influence. For someone to tell them what's right between them. When they got through talking to them, I don't know how many of them, but I do know some of them, if we have encouraged, go home. Go home. Go home. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, this world is full of people who need Jesus. Amen. And we see them. We see them every day. They cross our path, but sometimes we never see them. Let me bring this to a close here. <coughs> Think about the gift that Jesus or God wants from you. It doesn't cost you money. It's affordable. It will not hinder your dreams. If you accept Him, He will live in your heart every day. Yes, Lord. And the best counselor you will ever have. Yes, Lord. Remember, His gift to, to us was Himself. And taking our place on the cross, can we make room today to give Him all? I have...
been an amazing journey for me. Going to different places and preaching in different churches and denominations. It's been a great blessing to learn. <clears throat> but I look at you today and I want you to think about something. Are you taking your kids to heaven with you? Is there division? The one thing that needs to get settled in everybody's heart is that we love God. Amen. Not a forceful love. It's not something that you say, you're going to love Jesus no matter what. Now, I've seen families who would tell their kids, you're going to love God. That's it. I'm thinking, that don't work either. By example. I pray almost all my life. One of the things I've asked God for, I said, Lord, when I finish, when I get to the end of wherever you take me and you tell me it's done, I want you to please help me have let my life have touched somebody that will take my place as a minister. I have got to a place here a couple of years ago. I just I had just put it in God's hands and I said, I've prayed it so much. Just it's a ditto, God, so every day you know that's what I want. I, I just it's just important that we do that. Yes. Yes. And we have, in the Splasher family, there's not many of them because they're so hungry, bless their hearts. <laughs> but when I became a minister and not a teacher, it really blew on. Long story short, after we prayed till most of them got saved, they're a whole lot better. But there was one young man who was from a broken home. That was raised by a member of my family. And out of all the people I would have ever thought, family, his mom and dad left him, and just terrible stuff. And he was raised and went to school, went to college, and then he enlisted in service. But he would always, when he got a chance, he'd say, I need to ask you some questions. They weren't prophetic questions, they were just simple questions. He talked about how do you how do you get God? I tell him. Shared with him what God could do for him. Spent, you know, not many hours, but spent many times with these little what I call gems of time that we had. Because sometimes the people he was with didn't want him talking to me. He goes to war. But now he emails. I can say whatever I want to. <laughs> so I began to tell him, you met Jesus. I said, Brian, your heart, Jesus is touching. Even though you haven't been raised in what I call a family, that you have got a family that loves you and helps you get where you are now. So I said, don't look at the bad, look at the good. And just while you're there, let Jesus speak to your heart. He got saved. When he came home, he came to my house. Now he's a man. And he sat down and he said, I've got to tell you something. He said, I know I'm called to preach. And he said, I think you're the only one that's going to understand this. They're not going to like it when I tell them. I said, I do. But I looked at him and I said, now I'm going to tell you something, young man. You are an answer to my prayer. Yeah. For years I've prayed that God would Amen. call somebody. And I said, you have a choice. He said, you think I'll make it? I said, get on the internet. Get your education that you need through the internet. Because he had to work. He had a family. It's my joy when I pass through the state he lives in. I will stop and hear this young man preach. He wears tennis shoes, old t-shirt, and a pair of jeans. I couldn't be prouder if he was my home. God can take. God can take. Nothing. What some people look at as a failure. you got to invest in 
this. I want you to stand with this. I want you to have your kids close to you. I want you to hold on to them. This morning I want to give this invitation in this fashion. I believe that I'm standing in the midst of people who love God. There may be some of you who have got needs. And if any part of this message was offensive to you, it was not meant to be offensive. It's just my style. I can't help that. I get nervous when I preach. God help me. It's hard to tell what I want to say. But I want you to understand this. This morning, we need, as our risen Savior has arose from the grave, He's not there anymore. He's all about families. Yes, 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 yes. If you're sick this morning, if you're struggling with something, if you have a personal matter that you'd like to lay on this altar, it's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. Hold the music. If that's what you're going for. Hold the music. We're, we're not letting anybody out here. Yeah. <laughs> now forgive me for embarrassing you. But I want us to come and just simply bring our kids with us and that, this is the way you teach them. You bring them and you, you just tell them, we're going to kneel for a minute. And you let mommy and daddy pray. And then you put your hand down and pray for them. Because the prayers that you pray now Amen. will shield them Amen. from the onslaught of the enemy. Amen. Whatever your need is today, this risen Lord is the level of he stands on waiting to hear our voices, our petitions. He wants to heal, deliver, and again, if you're saved, that's wonderful. But you need to be saved. You need to say, God, give me the, the desire to seek to be saved and to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And some of us who've had the Holy Ghost forever and a day, we need to say, God, increase that wonderful blessing yes. in my life. And let, let that Holy Ghost teach me more this year than I've ever been taught. Whatever you need, whatever you need.